Hello and welcome to Small Gold. In case you missed it, top gold and silver stories for the week ended August 6, 2017. Apple and Google U.S. Treasury holding store in 2017. Apple and Alphabet, that's Google's new name, held nearly $100 billion worth of U.S. Treasury securities as at June 30th, 2017, according to the company's most recent SEC filings. Combined, Apple and Google U.S. Treasury security holdings top the nation holdings of Canada, of France, and Germany. So what happens if Apple and Google dump U.S. Treasuries? You know, we've talked about foreigners perhaps dumping U.S. Treasuries, and we've seen there's been a reversal in the last six months. Foreigners are actually adding to U.S. Treasuries, but there was a concern what would happen if foreigners dumped U.S. Treasuries. Well, I guess the reason was that we rely on foreigners, the United States, to purchase uh, U.S. debt securities to fund the U.S. deficit so it can spend money on that it doesn't have. Well, it seems that... Um, the U.S. government is also relying on corporate America to do the same. Also, we're going to cover uh, today silver imports into China through the first half of 2017 are at a seven-year high. However, Indian silver imports are running at a faster pace than China's through the first half of 2017. We're going to take a look at those numbers, those silver import numbers, and see what they mean. They're quite significant. All right, our top economic story is that one about U.S. corporations, Apple, Google, Facebook, others, adding and holding a growing and substantial amount of U.S. Treasury securities. Now, recently, we've noted that foreigners, Russians, Saudis, Chinese, and other BRIC nations, had been increasing their U.S. Treasury holdings since November. You can click on the link here. I've been covering that story since February, noting at the beginning of the year a bit of an increase. That is definitely now a trend through May foreigners increasing their U.S. Treasury holdings. However, with the notable exception of Mexico, who indeed has slashed their Treasury holdings. However, countries like Russia, China, Saudi Arabia, Britain, India, Switzerland have all increased their U.S. Treasury holdings. And now we're seeing corporate America is doing the same, boosting their Treasury holdings. According to the recent SEC filing, Apple owned $52.6 billion in Treasuries, that's up 28% from the $41 billion they owned in the third quarter of 2016. Apple's holdings were $20, $20 billion in short-term U.S. Treasury notes. Those are the 2, 3, 5, 7, or 10-year holdings. And they've got a whopping $31.4 billion in the 30-year bond. And the remainder, they have about, I think it's about a billion in Treasury bills in the shorter term. Alphabet Google held $44.8 billion in U.S. Treasury notes, they don't seem to hold any of the bonds, the 30-year, but that was up 19.1% from just $37.6 billion at the end of 2016. And Facebook held $11 billion in U.S. Treasuries, up 57% from the $7 billion as of uh, December 31st, 2016. So if you take Apple, Google, and Facebook, Combined, they have about $108 billion in U.S. Treasuries. Let's see how that would compare them to, um, that's not much better in the size there, uh, compared to other entire nations. So if you go from 100 down, that's Korea, Belgium, Canada, France, Germany, uh, Thailand, Bermuda, United Arab Emirates, Netherlands, Turkey, Norway, Sweden. Those com companies have more in U.S. Treasuries than all of those, and they're approaching Singapore, Russia, and India, and the number uh, or the, the notional amount of U.S. Treasuries that they hold. So quite a story. It hasn't really been reported, but the last six months, you can see from this chart here, this is the foreigners. You can see the increase. It's hard to see, but China from early in the year from 1.051 billion trillion to 1.1 trillion. You can see Japan is up. You can see Brazil is up. You can see Russia is up significantly. If you go all the way out there, 88. 0.2 billion, they go up to 108 billion. So there's a big increase from this number from here to here. The the numbers are increasing. The foreigners and now corporate America seem to be adding to U.S. Treasuries. All right, let's move on now. Oh, there we have. Can't avoid it. Cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. If you're interested in purchasing those and you don't have a Coinbase account, you can get one through the link below or 
from the link on the Smogo website. You open up an account, you get $10 worth of free Bitcoin. When you buy $100 worth of Bitcoin, and Smogold also gets credited with $10 worth of free Bitcoin. If you want to keep your Bitcoin safe, click on that link. You can get yourself a Ledger wallet. They're about 59 euro, and they're a way of pulling your coins off the exchanges, setting up your own private keys to hold your cryptocurrencies. And you can always put them back on the exchange when you're ready to trade, but this way you can ensure that you're not subject to a hack of Coinbase or wherever you might be trading your coins. And again, Smoggle gets a small commission if you do indeed purchase a ledger through the site. Also, if you're interested in silver, I've recently produced a 30, 40 page silver report with four companion videos. It takes you through the silver, silver supply and demand dynamics. It goes through all the uh, sources of silver, where it comes from, how much comes from mining, how much comes from, um, from scrap, what countries produce it, also where it goes, how much is used in electronics, how much is used in solar panels, how much is used in producing coins, bars, and rounds, and some surprising information in there that you don't get just from the cherry pick data that you hear from people telling you silver is going to skyrocket. There's some good data in there, so if you're interested, you could purchase it below, and you can also go to the website, and there's the buying options right here. It costs $20 if you're not a small gold patron, and it costs um, $15 if indeed you are. If you want to become a small gold patron, you can also do that below by clicking on the link and agreeing to donate a small amount or a large amount each month to smallgold.com. Right, let's get to the rest of the stories now. Also, you can donate via Bitcoin, PayPal, Litecoin as well. So gold closed the week down 0.8%. It was down about $10 on the, on the week. However, it was up all week. It was just that uh, the job numbers came out in on Friday and they were on the surface. They were good numbers. They were higher than expected. More jobs created. Zero Hedge pointed out that those numbers were, however, mostly part-time jobs, but Wall Street reacts to the top line number and that made people think that the Fed's more likely to raise interest rates and that drove the price of gold and silver down. Silver even more so. Silver closed the week down to from 1674 to 1624 and that was down about 3%. Here's our weekly look at the gold-silver ratio. It's been well above 70 for a couple of years now and it doesn't look like it's moving down at all. Closed the week at 77.54 to 1. Okay, this is the joke here, tweets of the week. Alert, gold to fork tomorrow. A scheduled molecular change will create two gold, AU and BU. Holders of AU will receive equal ounces of BU, highlighting that gold is immutable. That's a joke. Uh, Bitcoin is not. Bitcoin has its own features, its, its own benefits, but oftentimes I hear people insist that Bitcoin is just better at everything, and, and it's just not true. All assets have their positives and negatives and their flaws. And sometimes, you know, I talk to bit people who are so fanatical about Bitcoin or so fanatical about gold, they really can't see anything else. I think I have this expression here, 2 plus 2 equals Bitcoin for Bitcoiners and 2 plus 2 equals gold for gold bugs. Similar with silver, everything, every piece of information they see, if they don't like it, they dismiss it and totally forget about it. If they like it, they insist it's proof. The gold, silver, Bitcoin, whatever it is, is going to the moon, and you can't deny it. So, Bitcoin did show that it can be messed with. The blockchain was split. You cannot do that to gold. That doesn't mean Bitcoin doesn't have other positive attributes. But you point that out, and a lot of people who are into Bitcoin will get very upset. There's Maestro. This came up during the week. He said in a congressional hearing that they they couldn't guarantee the value of Social Security, but they could make the payments. And then about 10 years later, here he is on Meet the Press. They asked him if Treasury bonds were still good investments. And he said, sure, we can always pay them because we can always print the money to pay them. So the maestro is speaking the truth. He came up a couple of times this week. We'll see a few more comments. Another thing, there's a lot of talk about removing Trump from office and without getting into the details of why, a lot of people are saying that it might cause a uh, civil 
civil unrest. I asked the question in a poll. Again, it's not scientific. Only 59 people participated, but a good majority think it would. And it's possible. Uh, usually, political leaders being removed is not, unless they're wildly popular or it's connected to something else, that usually doesn't result in riots and civil unrest. Although a civil rights leader being assassinated, Martin Luther King, did lead to riots. Um, so you never know. Normally, what's happening, like, for example, in Venezuela, that's based not on political turmoil, although there's part of it, but that's an economic crisis. And people clearly will have an issue when there's economics are impacting their daily life. All right, here's some of the stories. So interestingly enough, the gold miners are not doing that badly, even though the price hasn't risen kind of a mixed bag because they have cut costs so they're on paper they're making money but that might be at the expense of capital expenditures exploration so we'll have to see how that all shakes out but not bad now Chinese demand for gold bar climbs by half on Hunt for Havens we're gonna do the People's Bank of China we're gonna get their update uh, probably Monday or tomorrow on how much People's Bank of China has added to their gold reserves since October, they haven't added any, and that gets people all excited. They're lying. And we're going to talk about it in detail tomorrow. You have to distinguish, I say this all the time, between China's gold and the People's Bank of China's gold. I don't know why people confuse the two. They don't confuse all the gold that's in India that is with individual households with the Royal Bank of India's gold. They don't do it in any other country, but for whatever reason, when the People's Bank of China says they only have this amount of gold, everyone assumes that they're lying. They're playing 4D chess. They why tilt, tilt, tilt their hand. Anyway, we're going to go through where all the gold is in China that we know about. But this shows that this is just Chinese gold demand in general. This is going to the people. This is in the People's Bank of China. 330 tons of gold, or over 10 million ounces of gold, consumed by Chinese citizens in the form of jewelry in the first half of 2017. Gold bar, see the investment side, is half that, 158 tons, still large, 4.9 million. Compare those 4.9 million ounces in investable bars in China in the first half to the abysmal, uh, like 151,000 or 160,000, some ridiculously low number, of American gold eagles sold in the first half of 2017. All right, here's the story we did cover. Mexico is dumping treasuries. You can check that out. There's a blog post. There's also a YouTube video. Speaking of India, former RBI governor says it's inappropriate to dissuade gold imports. We're also going to cover that probably Tuesday and show why India besides gold running interference with the rupee it does screw up their trade imbalance oftentimes imports into india represent 10 20 percent of their imports it messes up their trade imbalance so they want and they don't have any other way of getting gold because they don't have gold mines in india unlike china who has a lot of the world's leading producer of gold six killed in an explosion in a legal gold mine details are sketchy on that i didn't follow up on what was going on there but you could do some research and let me know. Um, here's a miner here. It lowered its silver equivalent payable ounces by 8% to 13.47. So there are silver miners that are still profitable. They've managed to high grade their mines. They've managed to cut cost. They, they do better because of the, the difference in the local currencies. Maybe they get a tax break, but somehow they've managed to get their cost down. This is in Peru. And, uh, they still manage to stay in business, even though we have relatively low silver prices. Here's the maestro again. Greenspan sees the return of stagflation unseen since the 70s. That was in Bloomberg. You want to check that article out. Litecoin. Litecoin terminals pop up across the U.S., U.K., Canada amidst surging demand. Litecoin, if you don't know, is basically a Bitcoin knockoff created about five, six years ago, intended to be silver to Bitcoin's gold. U.S. economic data, again, we do this every week. It's always okay, nothing great, nothing that bad. Pending home sales were up, Chicago PMI up but below expectations, and the Dallas Fed was up slightly. U.S. Men's sales update, really 
nothing to report on we don't have we finished the month we've already reported on that at small gold you can see the final u.s american silver eagle u.s american gold buffalo u.s american gold eagle sale so we're not going to review those now they're on the website and they're in the youtube separate blog post and youtubes on each coin but if you're interested in buying those coins you can do so through the site below those there's links below those youtubes there's links below this youtube there's links on the website affiliate links you can compare pricing and shipping and um, if you do buy small gold gets a small commission but you pay no more no less than if you visit those sites directly not investment advice but if you are going to buy gold or silver please consider doing so shopping at the small gold links let's get through kazakhstan now the world gold council's finally admitted they been reporting that central banks are buying gold well they're not only russia and kazakhstan had been buying gold and more recently in the second quarter of 2017 has the turkish central bank so when they say central banks are buying gold and they're not germany's selling a small amount every month for coin to go to coin production uh, the rest of the central banks are not adding anything but Kazakhstan, 57 months in a row, has added gold to her reserves. Russia doesn't add every, each and every month, but every year for the past three years, they've added this year, they probably add 200 tons, last year 199, two years ago 205 tons. So Russia is definitely adding gold to her reserves, Central Bank of the Federation of Russia. U.S. economic data, personal income down, but spending up. I never like to see that. That just means people spending money they don't have, construction spending down. These numbers aren't bad. ISF manufacturing, ISM PM. But again, they, they're nothing soaring, nothing plummeting, just tepid numbers. Even the way they calculate GDP, they say it's 2%. It really isn't. I mean, they're calculating it in a, in a new way. It's probably flat or, or below growth. But that's the economy we've had ever since the financial crisis. No matter how much money they print, how low they take interest rates down, they haven't managed to generate growth. American Silver Eagles sales, they were strong in July. They were 2.2 million. You can actually see, this is just the, the screenshot of the, you can click on that, that works, of the YouTube. But 2.2 million, not bad. It's up from 986,000 in June. So Silver Eagle sales aren't bad, as you'll see, though. Gold Eagle sales, still atrocious. Now, China, first half, silver imports climbed the highest level in nearly seven years. They imported 330 tons of silver in June. That's up 34% from last year. And nearly 2,000 tons of silver in the first half of the year imported. That's 63.78 million ounces imported into China in the first half of the year. Now, we get all excited when the U.S. Mint had a record year in 2015. They minted 47 million. Well, look at this, 63 million just in the first half of the year. And by the way, the fact that China imports silver is pretty incredible because they are a major silver uh, producer themselves. They produce about, I think from memory, I don't have it in front of me, about 80, 90 million ounces themselves a year. So if you uh, take that amount out, that doesn't, that stays in China. That means that instead of there being 850, 860 million ounces a year mined globally, for international consumption it's really only 750. now let's go to india they imported 2638 tons or 84.8 million tons so far in the first half of 2017 i'll have a full report on that on tuesday or wednesday and you can see if you add up china and india's silver imports it's about 150 million ounces of silver out of the 800 i mean that's in the first half and then that's 300 million out of the 850 million but then as i mentioned if you take away the 100 million ounces that china produces and uh, the two of them india and china import of the available global uh silver about 40 percent of it if they continue at this place so very significant that china and india are pulling a lot of silver a lot of that's needed they both have big solar projects um, solar, they estimate, to take up between 80 and 120 million ounces a year. So a good portion of that uh, silver going into China and India is probably going to that. Although there's probably some investment in China. Chinese and Indian on the whole tend to prefer gold as an investment. 
they tend to give gold as gifts they tend to wear gold although with a rising middle class uh, silver is also increasing in jewelry sales MBA mortgage applications down purchases down refis down that's all it's hard to read much into that those are weekly numbers here was the big problem ADP they came in with a relatively low number in the middle of the week and then at the end of the week on Friday the Bureau of Labor Statistics contradicted that and said there was this big job gains and then the gold and silver sold off but here's Fed's Meister I think this is the Cleveland Fed president GDP should grow slightly above 2% over next year big deal on uh, the third I not on the third actually it was a couple of days I was on the first I was on with Jason Barack of Wall Street for Main Street I think we did a very long interview I think it was about an hour or so and that's right here and we talked about cryptocurrencies we talked about gold silver uh, one thing we talked about was the situation in Venezuela and I just did a separate video basically introducing this video saying because Jason had made a point that Venezuelans you know because of the hyperinflation that you have in in Venezuela that dollars are very valuable and a lot of people in the United States and the dollar collapse crowd say dollar is toilet paper going to zero well maybe one day but uh, as we've seen above they are foreigners are buying US corporations are buying US Treasury securities and Venezuelans are using dollars ironically as an inflation hedge against the Venezuelan Boulevard Rand gold miners so we're talking about the miners doing okay at least the gold miners reports 53% rise in profits cash pile mounts Richmond mines reports second quarter financial results driven by solid operational record cost performance from the island gold mine reports net cash flow of 19.2 million here we mentioned this already Kazakhstan extending its buying to 57 consecutive months Turkey buying gold and then Germany selling some and then also we mentioned Russia's buying gold as a central bank not so good over on the silver side with Hecla Miner reporting a loss, but they're claiming that all in cost, and they still lose money, uh, that they can get silver out of the ground for $9.97 an ounce, which is a 22% decrease from what they used to be able to pull it out at. More economic data numbers, you can look at them, see the claims lower. Here is the small gold, Gold Eagle report, 12500 up from 4,000 last month not very good look at the there was in 2016 and 2017 just gold sales are non-existent at the US Mint we also see that with the gold Buffalo it's not just the gold Eagle it's gold sales at the US Mint in general there's your payroll number 209,000 new jobs versus 180 now here's Greenspan again bond bubble about to break because of abnormally low interest rates you can criticize them but to his credit he did lower interest rates he but he did raise them again it's something that Bernanke and Yellen really haven't done in any meaningful way some would argue that Greenspan rate rose them too fast and he pricked the dot-com bubble that's a discussion for another day here's the American Go Buffalo story that's all they've sold this year probably gonna be the lowest year since 2000 and that's 15 14 13 12 2011 might be lower who knows might be higher might catch a bid later in the year here's your donation to small gold and I believe that is it so thank you very much for listening remember to check out the small gold offers on the site and the links below for gold silver and cryptocurrencies and also remember to like this video if you liked it subscribe and to subscribe to smallgold.com thank you very much